Hello, in this lecture we're going to continue on with Supply and Demand Chapter 4. Remember that our goals are to state the law of demand and distinguish uh, shifts in the demand from movements along the demand curve, as well as state the law of supply and distinguish between shifts in supply from movements along the supply curve, and explain how the law of demand and the law of supply interact to bring about equilibrium, discuss the limitations of demand and supply analysis. We're going to continue on with our discussion of demand in this case. We've got the application uh, demand shift. So remember, we talked about the difference between movements along the demand curve and the shifting of the demand curve. So what we have here is our standard graphs with the demand. Uh, we have on the vertical axis being the price, the horizontal axis being the quantity. We only have two things that we are in accounting for in this case, meaning the price is generally going to be the thing that we will change and see what the effect will be on uh, the quantity. That's what we're taking a look at here. Our example that we have, what happens to demand for CDs if one, uh, if you won $1 million in the lottery. So if this was our personal demand curve and notice what happens in the normal demand curve as price goes up, uh, we will want less of it. So down here, if we're buying this much at this price, if the price then was to move up to here, then of course we would buy less on the demand curve. Now, if we won a million dollar lottery, uh, it probably wouldn't matter so much what the price was. If we wanted it, we would uh, probably buy it. And that would mean that our demand would shift out. All, th that means that we're talking about something other than just price, which is why the demand curve is going to shift out in this way. So at any given price, if we were at this price now, we move out to the new demand curve and we're way over here. So we would demand more at any given price. Remember that anything other than price that's going to have an effect on demand is going to basically shift at the demand curves. Let's think about this in terms of a graph format and uh, pictorially uh, and a chart and a graph. And then we'll talk about individual demand curves and how to graph them out and then how to build basically and what to think about a complete demand curve for the entire market may look like. So note here what we have is we have this nice table here, another nice uh, Excel table where we've got point A has a price of at $1. This is the movies rentals demanded per week. So A, $1, nine movies. So here's point A at nine movies for that $1. And then of course we have point B, $2, and that's gonna be eight. So we've got $2 here, here's point B. That means people are going to get eight of them. And then C at $4, we have six. So here's the $4, the price goes up to $4. And we are then here at six at point C. And then of course, if the price goes up to $6, there's gonna be four. So here's $6, here's point D. And that means that people are gonna demand four. And finally, if we're at point E, then we have $8, people are gonna demand two. So here's $8 demanding two. Note that if we have two, two points, obviously, and if, if this is a straight line, then we can take those two points and graph them out uh, and graph our line out here. All right, so now we're going to think about the entire market. What would happen if we took individual demands and we created the, the market demand? And clearly, we can see that this would be very difficult to do exactly, uh, in, um, basically impossible for an entire market uh, in, in like a U.S. market for any particular good because there'd be too many people to think through this. But conceptually, we can see this. So we're going to take a look at our model and we're going to conceptually think of, well, what, what is demand overall for this product? If we were to be able to take everybody's demand curves and map them out, basically be able to sit, ask them and, and tell them and get the information from them in terms of the changing prices and what those changing prices would do to their demand, their purchasing. And then we were to add all of those up, all those options up, we can then come up to the market demand. So, for example, we have our three people here. We have Alice, Bruce and Carmen, and we have uh, the two dollars at two dollars. Uh, Alice is going to get eight of them. Bruce, five, would want five. And then Carmen, one. That's a total eight, five, and one of 14. So th that's where we would be at. At two, notice that all individuals have different preferences. People have different preferences. However, we know this, the no we notice that the, nor the normal trend is that it all goes down. As price goes up, people are going to demand more. So Alice is still going to demand more at each price, but uh, Bruce's price goes down or the amount demanded as price goes up, uh, the amount demand goes down as well. So at $4, Alice still wants six down from eight. Bruce wants three down from five. Carmen is, is out of the market. 
So we've got six and three as the nine. And then at uh, $6, we got four for Alice, Bruce one, zero Carmen, down to five total market if we add up the four and the one. And at $8, two, zero, zero. So we get the two. So if we were to graph this out, then we can see this pictorially as well. If we were to graph each individual demand curve, the market uh, demand curve is the summation of the individual demand curves. So here's Carmen. Here's Bruce and here's Alice. So we just mapped out their demand curves in accordance with the table we just took a look at. And then of course the market demand curve, if we map that out, would be to the to the far left of each of the demand curves. And we could see that each of those given points, we would just add up uh, the given points and come up to the market demand out here. And that is what would give us the market demand curve.